What's up, everyone? Welcome to my corner of the internet. I'm your host, Ryan Kramer, and this is Crossover Commerce, presented by Ping Pong Payments, the leading global payments provider helping sellers keep more of their hard-earned money. What's up, everyone? Episode 36 of Crossover Commerce here. I'm Ryan Kramer, your host from Ping Pong Payments. Thanks for joining us. I know yesterday we were supposed to have an episode, but that's no problem. Uh, our guest, Danny Carlson, got sick, so we're going to actually roll him into uh, a future episode. So we're kicking off this week with the one and only Mina Elias from Go Hydrolite. So Mina and I have been talking constantly, nonstop. I feel like it's been months, but obviously with 2020, it's been it feels like years that we've been chatting around uh, with different people. Uh, but there's a lot of cool things that Mina's been, uh, Mina has in the works. There's a lot of uh, great tips that he brings every single time he talks about PPC, which is what we're going to be talking about today. And he actually is a seller himself. So he's uh, in a very specific category that's very tough to break through. So we're actually going to be talking about launching products in a tough category. And maybe he can give us some tips to kind of break through the clutter, be successful because he himself is successful uh, for his brands, uh, helping other sellers be successful. He's super active uh, in the seller community for Amazon and helping other people grow and succeed as well. He's also an MMA fighter, so we can maybe talk about that as well. But welcome again to Crossover Commerce. Again, if you're watching us live on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, if you have found us through Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, even go ahead and post your questions or thoughts in the comments. And we'll be able to see those in real time, throw them up, answer your questions. And if you catch us on a different time, uh, watch it later or save it for later, go ahead and tag me or myself in those posts. And we'll make sure that you get your questions answered. But that being said, I'm going to head and bring Mina in to, uh, kind of talk and, uh, introduce himself. Mina, what's up? Yo, yo, how's it going, man? <laughs> you, you've had a crazy couple 48 hours. We were literally just talking about how bananas that your your time has been. So why don't you kind of maybe just fill in like the life of an entrepreneur and just kind of like doing what you're doing <laughs> so, <laughs> right before you yeah, hopped on here. Basically, I was just saying how crazy it is that in, in all of the years where it's never snowed in Texas, the one day that I had a flight out of Texas to LA, it decided to snow like northeast level snow like it was crazy uh <laughs> like every as i was driving i drove uh, so i woke up 5 a.m drove from 6 to like 9 no like 10 30 to uh, to from dallas to austin and i was just seeing like one car accident after the next after the next and i'm like dude like this these people are not used to this and um i was kind of scared so i was like driving 50 miles an hour or so which is still like a you know fast but I just didn't didn't want anyone to like kind of go crazy and, and like hit me. It was a rental car and everything. So, um, but yeah, man, life of an entrepreneur is wild. I um, I actually traveled. So, this is this is a cool thing. In 2020, I traveled 18 times, 17 times. So 17 different trips, not like so it's 34 flights, uh, you know. And um, basically. Uh, as I I did it, I realized like, man, like I'm losing so much time, like w with work and all this stuff. Um, and so I, I said, like, part of what I do is like, what, why I do this is so I have this freedom and I'm not really free if I can't like travel, you know, then I'm truly not free because I can't travel because I'm not, you know, as productive. And so I made it a massive goal is to be able to like have a setup and a system where I, I go to the airport in the airport i'm productive uh on the plane i'm productive off the plane i i go to my airbnb or whatever i'm productive there i have the whole setup and everything so i worked really hard and now i can say like anywhere i go i'm at 80 percent capacity uh awesome. so here in my office i would say i'm like it's i'm at 100 percent obviously I'm not at 100% of my potential. I'm really diving down in, in, into like uh, uh, diving into deep work and, and uh, improving my deep work and understanding like, you know, pr priming, uh, priming myself, uh, like my organization, everything, eliminating distractions, all of that stuff. And I've been getting a lot better at it. Uh, but, you know, I wanted to get to because like my productivity was maybe 20, 25 percent when I travel. And most people will say the same. Like I get to the Airbnb, the, the, all this stuff, like nothing set up. But. I, I built the system where it's like in the airport, 
I'm I'm optimized for work at the on the plane. I'm optimized for work, and I actually schedule it, things during those times that are that can be done efficiently in, in those places. I get to my Airbnb. I have a two screen setup using a portable tablet. I have uh, you know a slim wireless keyboard and a mouse. Uh, you know I have uh, like a, a compact like camera and you know microphone. Everything all set <laughs> up. Yeah, like, no, for for real. Like I, I worked hard. I made sure that. Any Airbnb that I go have specific things that I look for so that I can work efficiently. Um, you know, I found exactly like the places where I can buy meal prep. Uh, I have like different water bottles for different occasions. Like I got the whole system down. So it's like I never <laughs> miss a beat. I have like my supplements are all like stacked and, and everything like, is it's good. Well, be, and you kind of like were super specific. And I don't think a lot of people think about that. Two things, I think traveling even right now when not a lot of people are doing it, like obviously that's that's up to each person. Uh, maybe my first thought is what, what's it like traveling right now? Obviously there's so many extra it's safety normal. precautions. Yeah, it's. Uh, I was going to say it's probably pretty barren, right? It's normal. It's uh, it's, uh, it's it the normal? same as, yeah, it's the same as when I traveled in 2019. It's the same thing. You know, you get to the airport, it's just like you have a mask on now. And then you have people that are constantly saying, sir, please put your mask, sir. You know, like that's the only difference is that you have yeah. the people nagging you, but it's like, there's always someone nagging you about something. I'm not against masks or anything. Like obviously I wear my mask and all this stuff at the airport, sure. but it's like nothing you just really hear it in the background. Is it over the loudspeaker too? It's like, sir over there who's sleeping please pull yeah, yeah they like. did that they did that yesterday they're like uh yeah sorry to wake everyone up anyone over two years old needs to have their mask on over their nose and i'm like okay like it's whatever this is all yeah, i'm going the noise canceling noise canceling headphones and then like just go i have these ones the, the sony xm 100 xm3 or whatever those are noise canceling i usually so i have on my phone uh a few binaural beats uh that are like saved and and they're like they're for work focus so when i put them on literally like it, it's like black you know like how everything goes black and you just have like light on what's in front of you it becomes like that um That's i awesome. have like playlists for priming so there's certain things that i listen to that will give my i'm huge into priming obviously because of mma and everything but there's like certain playlists that i'll listen to that will give my body and brain a signal hey this is about to, to happen and um you know it, it just helps you get into the zone way faster and um yeah so i mean some people will be like oh, i can't can't really work on the plane and all that stuff you know listen to uh, podcasts and and uh, audiobooks and just like i i milk every single minute you know right time's the commodity that you can't get back so you have to yeah. optimize it as best you can i was asked today when i woke up i had a call with uh someone from israel and they're like when do you sleep and i go Honestly, I'm just like super productive. If before I'm bed, I shoot off a couple like networking messages to people and say, hey, we should connect. And then typically when I wake up, there's at least five or six meetings on my desktop for that uh, day or the next couple of days. I'm like, hey, I'm just making like time work for me because if I'm not awake, yeah. I need something to be happening. But uh, for those of you, uh, for those who are watching again on uh, live or they're going to watch later, you, you've been around the, uh, you've been a seller for a little while, maybe Give us context, your background, and how you got to where you are today, because I think your story is super fascinating. It's not a typical one by any means, but something you almost like your entrepreneur, you you wanted to kind of like step away from your nine to five job, like typical, but you are an athlete as well. So maybe break down your background for those who may not have heard you speak before. Yeah. So, uh, my, so I was born in Egypt, uh, when I was two moved to Dubai with my family, they, you know, my dad got a job there. It was way better. Um, so we moved there and then from two to 18, I was in Dubai, uh, went to college in Connecticut in America. Um, this is a whole other story, so I'm not going to get into that, but, um, <laughs> basically, uh, studied chemical engineering and chemistry, uh, for my bachelor's, uh, got uh, studied industrial engineering for my master's. So I did my bachelor's, uh, finished my bachelor's in 2014, finished my master's in 2018. So started my master's in 2017, beginning of 2017. Um, and basically, uh, I was, you know, just basic following that the path that everyone loves to follow, like the, you know, uh, go to school, get good grades. And I was on point. So uh, college, uh, high school, I had really good grades. I got accepted into all top school. The reason I ended up in Connecticut is because of like visa issues. So I, I chose Canada and, uh, then Canada didn't give me a visa. So I had to settle for America, not really settling, but, um, I wanted to go to one of the Ivy league schools that I had applied to and got accepted in. Uh, but they said, you have to wait a year and reapply and they don't accept any transfers or anything like that. So 
at six, at 17, 18 years old, you think one year is a long time. And I thought that I was losing my entire life by waiting a year. So I made the decision, obviously it wasn't the best decision, but I made the decision to go to a lesser school, uh, but still, you know, kind of be on track. So I finished on time in 2014. I was top on my class in chemical engineering and chemistry. Um, and then, you know, got, got like a corporate job, nine to five. I was in new product development for a surgical devices company. Then I went into chemical safety analysis. Then I went to, uh, so hated that because it was two screens in front of a computer and I was doing the same thing over and over again. I'm now in front of two screens. Uh, <laughs> so it kind of feels like, Hey, you know, it's a big circle, but, uh, now I'm like doing a lot of problem solving, a lot of exciting stuff and leadership and management. And I think I love like, you know, being a leader and, and managing things. And I think I just have the, the brain for that. So, um, did that then, uh, or, or yeah, did that and then became a project uh, manager for a uh, uh, ceiling company for so radiant heating and cooling. Uh, that was the first time that I worked with a friend and I worked in a fun work environment and I realized that it, it's the environment and the and the people that make a job good or bad. It's not the the actual work. And that's right. when I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm okay not doing chemical engineering. You know, because I feel like so many of us get so invested, especially like. I'm talking to like certain cousins and friends that are like, you know, just getting out of college and they're like, I want to do, I'm like, I'm like, please understand that you made a decision when you were like 17 years old, 16 years old, you made a decision. You're now 21, 22. You are much smarter and much wiser. Do not let 16 year old you control your life because they made a decision and said, oh, I love civil engineering. Oh, I love like accounting. And then you, you do accounting or you do civil engineering and you're like, this is horrible. So it, it took a while for me to realize that. Don't let it take a while for you. Um, but basically I was like, you know what? I'd rather do something different, but be this happy because I was having so much fun. Uh, there was a brewery right next door. Like it was a fun environment. You know, we had fun. Um, company shut down due to like some financial turbulence. So I said, I like project management more than what I was doing. Let me try my luck. And so I did project management for, for construction. Now that's another example of like when leadership is not good and when the work environment is not good. I had a massive office, built-in bathroom, huge, but it was just like, and I was problem solving all day. Right. But it was just like, I didn't feel like I had friends. You know, it was everyone's older, like way older, you know, 15, 20 years, at least 20 years older. You know, the the, the youngest was like 17 years older than me. It was um, like a lot of politics, um, you know, because it was a small like family owned company. So it was a lot of like that kind of politics. Uh, leadership was horrible. There was no, you know, pushing people to, to grow. There was no uh, like they, they didn't build like... Um, they didn't appreciate people enough. They were not like there to kind of like say, oh, like work hard and we'll give you raises. It was al almost like very penny pinching. And so that's I'm, I'm glad I'm very blessed that I was in that situation because now as a as a employer and as a like a, a leader uh, and a boss, I'm way, way, way better because I took all of the bad things that everyone has ever done to me as an employee. And I like flip them. And now like literally people come and work, you know, for, for any, like for me and it's or for on any of my brands. And they're like, wow, like this is like an incredible work environment. And so, and I'm actively trying to become better because I like have this phobia of ever becoming like my, any one of my old bosses. So anyways, did those jobs, hated them. And right around 2018, I was reading rich dad, poor dad. And at the same time, hating my nine to five things kind of clicked. <laughs> And I was like, this is a, a scam. Like this is, you know, corporate slavery, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and so when I was in, but I wasn't really thinking about starting a business, but when I was in Egypt on vacation, my dad had brought it up and that kind of sparked me to kind of look into things and, and you know, and I started looking into things. I did a quick feasibility analysis. I said, okay, if I was going to start a company, of course, it's going to be a supplement company. And my dad, cause my dad, he's the one who said like, Hey, like, why don't you make your own supplements and sell them? So I was like, oh, of course I got, I'm going to do a supplement company. And then, because I, I personally think I'm the best in the world. And can, if not the best, I can't be the best in the world with supplements. It's my passion. It's an addiction. Um, I have the background. I'm a user of the supplements. Um, I love experimenting with them. So it's like, the, I'm not missing anything. You know, there's like literally nothing. There's no, no one can one up me uh, in terms of like the kind of like uh, the, the circumstance I'm in. So 
basically did a little feasibility analysis and figured it was going to be five dollars to to make and then uh it sells for 25 on amazon obviously you know when you're doing those types of rough the math, the math then, works out <laughs> yeah, I mean, it worked out for someone who didn't know anything about business. As an engineer, I was super sharp, but as a business guy, engineer, project manager, good. Business guy, horrible. Didn't know anything about <laughs> So anyways, went back to America. Uh, you know, vacation was done. Made uh, made a few samples. Uh, went to the gym, gave them to a few friends, said, hey, try these out. This is from a, a different company. Uh, or from, not, I didn't even say I had a company. I said, this is from a company. They trusted me with them. They tried them. They loved it. Um, I made that I made electrolytes and the reason I did I was on keto and on keto you lose a lot of like you know electrolytes in in sweating and you know your your blood sugar levels are like kind of tanked and so um, because there's no insulin spikes it's very hard to retain the sugar uh, the sorry the electrolytes and so I created it pretty much for myself to improve my performance and then passed it on to my friends who I said, this could improve your performance. And then everyone, like the consensus was this stuff works. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then on October 10th, I announced, I said, hey, I officially, you know, I, I just incorporated, I officially have my own business. I'm a supplement company, blah, blah, blah. And you know, like you, you feel so proud, like writing that stuff. <laughs> Here we stuff. go, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh man, I'm doing some great stuff. Um, and then someone hit me up. They said, hey, uh, I can get you a booth at this event if you're down and I said, yeah, hundred uh, percent. He said, yeah, just bring in product and, and bring a banner and come. Went on Vista print, print made a banner, uh, you know, brought my product, went to the event and uh, you know, I sold 25 out of the 40 that I what, made. What year was this again? 2018. 2018. So November 2nd, 2018. So it was literally uh, three weeks exactly after I incorporated something like that. Okay. So yeah, I basically uh, three weeks, I, I came like I had the conversation with my dad September 14th, October 10th or, or October 2nd. I gave my friends the sample October 10th. I incorporated. And then November 2nd, I made my, you know, soft launch, which I called it a soft launch. I didn't even know what a soft launch was, but I called it a soft launch and um, people kept asking me, where can I buy this? And then I said, it's going to be on Amazon soon, which is the famous lie. The famous Mina lie. It's gonna be just on like Amazon. look for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, for it, guys. I, I, I was thinking, I was like, should I tell them to go buy it from the gym? Nah, that's stupid. Should I go tell them to, you know, like I kept thinking, should I go tell them this? Should I go to, and, and all of my answers were going to be stupid. Like buy from the gym, send me an email, send me an email. Yeah, like very shady, like yeah, exactly. <laughs> call me, what, so I can, how am I going to, I'm going to process your card on Square. You're going to call me and tell me your card number. So it was like. Everything seemed like a stupid answer, and I didn't want to seem stupid. Obviously, the ego and everything. And so I was like, "It's gonna be on Amazon soon." I was like, "If even it doesn't get on Amazon, I'm never seeing these people again." And so then I went home, and go went crazy into figuring out how to get this stuff on Amazon. Ended up realizing that it is simply it's possible to sell on Amazon. That's all I figured out from all the videos that I watched. That at least I was like. At, at least there's some people doing it out there and some of them look really stupid. So if they could do it, like it's definitely a possibility. It was no exactly. longer like a, a, a dream, you know? And so then I called Amazon seller, etc. I said, Hey, like I want to sell supplements on your website. Like, what do I do? And then they were super like helpful. They sent me uh, like the instructions on how to get a seller central account. And they sent me like information on how to get ungated, blah, blah, blah. Followed the steps got paperwork from random uh suppliers on to get on gated eventually after four times of being rejected from amazon on the fifth time i got on gated and then it was so the one thing that i would say is like so from there it was just like okay like let's figure this thing out i got into all of the facebook groups like i was literally in 12 groups my first thing ever was i um I had a friend who was in e-commerce who said, you need to consult with Steven Black. You know, you're, you got, you're going to have him soon on your podcast. Yeah. So um, I hopped on the phone with Steven and I was like, hey, like, so this is my story. Like, what do I do? And he kind of gave me a bunch of answers that sucked, but they were like the right ones that you don't want to hear. Like if you told me like, Mina, like, is there a supplement like that you can lose fat and stuff? I'll be like. Okay, bro. So here's what you got to do. You got to start working out every single day. You got to start dieting. You got to buy a food scale. You're going to start counting your macros and logging into my fitness. And you'll be like, yeah, okay, okay. And then you're going to ignore all of that. And you're going to go somewhere and be like, hey, man, do you know like I'm a fat burner or something? So this is it's like, yeah, one of those things. Yeah. 
Steven's like, dude, you got to use, you know, you, you have a cool story. You're a chemical engineer, you're a fighter, you know, use your personal branding, this, you know, make sure you keep generating reviews. And then I was like, oh, man. he didn't give me any hacks like this guy, like, you know, but I love Stephen Black. Like, obviously, I wouldn't have connected you. Stephen Black has had a massive impact in my life, but basically he gave me a lot of answers I didn't want to hear. It was rough, but I kept like kind of, but once I got into his group, I started asking a million questions and then I got suggested other groups. So I got into the Brax FBA group and, and uh, whatever, Tom Wang's group and, and uh, leader, on, like all these different groups. I got into all the groups and I started asking questions like aggressively, you know, like no one, everyone knows like I, I it's, I'm either like this or like this. Like, Mina, no you way. fill up, you fill up my social media profile every single day, and I'm just constantly reading your comments. I feel like you're the only one commenting on all those groups. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also have a system now, so now right. people think they're like, "Dude, how are you always online?" I'm like, "I have a system. I'm not gonna. Sh I'll share it with you offline, but it's yeah. a very cool system." So, anyways, I'm like, uh, okay, like I gotta figure this thing out. And luckily, I had a friend who hit me up. She said, "My sister does." Amazon stuff. And uh, I hit up her sister and she's managing a $12 million Amazon account for like CPG brands. And so nice. we chatted. She didn't have too much to offer. Like I, I can say now, like I've way far, uh, way surpassed her, but she did give me one thing that changed my entire life, which said you should go to uh, add NYC, which is a, a conference hosted by CPC strategy now known as Tenuity. They, I think they, they were, they merged with a company and then they, you know, yeah. rebranded to Tenuity. So when I went there, that was a huge moment in my life because number one, I was in a room with people who are all successful. And so I was talking to very successful sellers. And number two, I had this entire agency that I literally like consulted with every single person i would attend the talk so for example like aj uh did a talk about listing optimization and enhanced brand content and i literally the second the the thing was done his talk was done i would go dude amazing talk loved it da, 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 da. you know compliment 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 and then i would be like by the way i have a few questions do you mind if i ask you a few questions go ahead ask 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 like just Basically, like anything that I can suck information from him, I would ask. I showed him my listing. Like he went through it, got a full like audit in like, you know, for free. And I, I did that with every single thing possible. And people like people noticed it. Like a guy told me, he's like, dude, I've never seen anyone network like you. I said, bro, I'm a man on a mission. Like I, I hope you're getting that T-shirt that we talked about. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to do it, man. The serial networker. I'm telling yeah. you you're connecting people. Yeah. But like you said, uh, continue. No, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll do it. Uh, let me, I'll add it to my list. After this <laughs> call, remind me, I'll add it to my list. Cause if, it, yeah, if it's on sure. my list, it gets done. So, <laughs> so uh, pretty much did that. And, and, um, a couple things that I went, so obviously I went out of that conference incredibly confident because I got so much information that would have cost like thousands and thousands and thousands and, and, and months of work to get, because you know, I just asked, I, I like, I, you know, I sucked the information from these people. And then, and I'm, I'm really sad that, uh, you know, it's been COVID hit because dude, I was thriving on this, on this. Like I go to a, a conference and I literally will talk to 100 people and like get information from them. And, and obviously I give, I give as much as I, I can give. Um, but it's like, you know, it's different in a, in a conference uh, environment, right. but the other thing that really changed my life is because at that event, I truly realized that, you know, I, I believe in myself and I can do this. I looked at the people that I talked to. Under Armour was there. Stark Estuna was there. I think like, you know, massive, massive, like Pampers was there. Like uh, One Bar was there. Like massive, massive companies. And I would talk to the people and I'm like, dude, this guy is the, no different than me. He does not have anything that I don't have. He's not smarter. He's not more hardworking. Nothing. Like, on on all on all, and everything i could say like i can you know do this or more so it's like it really made me believe like i could do this and and um you know and i, I remember going home that day and and i was so full of energy because i was like man like sky's the limit like i can do this i can i can really go full time in my business like it no longer was like a wish it was now right. like a, you know a goal and and so that's so how are, you doing, how are you doing uh, selling wise when this was happening? Were you like trickling sales or how, what was it I think like? Maybe like one, one or $1,000 a month in profit. 
and okay. that was like around no 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 maybe two thousand dollars a month in profit but okay. then by so i was reading um think and grow rich and it says like you have to say exactly what you want when you want it and and be very specific and how you're going to achieve it and it forces the subconscious mind to achieve it and so every single day going to work i was saying by may 31st 2019 i'm going to be making five thousand dollars net profit per month and i'm going to be able to quit my uh, full-time job and i'm going to do this by you know increasing the sales of hydrolyte and the, 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 you know so i, I right. was following that whole super specific yeah very specific and so every single day on my way to work i would say it like four or five times and i always tell people like say it because your the words are so powerful your mind starts believing it it becomes like reality so uh, i don't know how it works but it works I'll try it. You know, you can't, yeah. you're not going to lose anything. So, um, anyways, April 31st, uh, my job fires me. And, uh, this was and 2019 or 2020? No, 2019. 2019. 2019 so, okay, so okay. Uh, March was the event. Right. And I think that they started catching on that I was taking too many vacations, which didn't make sense because usually I take my one month vacation in Egypt to see my family. So they're right. like, this guy doesn't really is taking too many vacations. It doesn't make sense. I don't know. I, they never gave me a reason why they fired me. They said, "Hey, you know, we just gotta let you go." But and the I, reason I, was you took too many vacations. No, no, no. They didn't tell me. I'm just thinking. I'm just oh, thinking okay. That Interesting. Because I took too many vacations. Usually, I would not not take any vacations and take a month okay. in Egypt to see my family. Yeah, that but makes then, sense. But then I used like in 2019, I used maybe like two weeks up. So they're like, something's fishy. Like, why would he use up his vacation that he, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know. Whatever. Sure. Yeah, we'll point. speculate. That's fine. Yeah. I believe so you. April 31st, I was doing $4,400 uh, a, a month in profit. So I was able to quit or not able to quit. I was fired and I was like, okay, my bills are, you know, around 3,500 or so. And, and, uh, you know, I'm making 4,400. I'm good. Okay. And, and I'm like, you know, thankfully that happened. And, and, uh, you know, now I'm full time. And, but I was like, there's no way like I can grow the business having a thousand dollars left, uh, left over. And so I said, okay, let me take a, uh, let me take advantage and just go on a, a four month vacation to Egypt. So I flew out to Egypt, um, stayed there for four months. My bills like significantly went down. I think I was spending yeah. like maybe 1500 a month. Uh, I, I think a thousand of it went to student loans and then 500 went to living in Egypt. It's like 500 there is like 8,000. The, right. The it's a, yeah, year, cost of living is probably really low in Egypt. I'm just yeah. So eight thousand, like you know, I can buy a meal with like sixty. You know, I, I, I can go the gym. My my gym membership was two hundred a month. So it's like it's nothing crazy. I, I, and I was getting eight thousand. So I was like, dude, this is good enough. And um and I like I was living very lavishly. Uh, I was on point and everything, and I was working very hard in my business. And so. After those four months, I came back to America to finally move into LA. And, and by then I was doing like $10,000 a month in profit. And so that's awesome. And then from there, just what, once I moved to LA, do the game changer, it was a game changer. Right. When was that? What time did you? December 1st, 2019. Okay. So right at the beginning of oh, close to beginning of pandemic almost. So yeah. That's, pandemic that's was interesting March. timing. Pandemic was March. So I, yeah. I spent December, January, February, and then. Uh, I was on a trip to Austin. I came back, and as I came back two days later, they shut down. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Like, I, th I feel like a lot of people remember like exactly where they were. A lot of people are like at the Orange Click conference over in even Europe. Like they were there, and they were shutting down as their people were leaving. But, uh, but yeah, uh, that, it's such a crazy background and how you got to where you are. Uh, just real quickly, uh, Sharon Evan, friend of both of ours, saying hi to both of us, and then. Hey, uh, and then Jeff on uh, YouTube, him and I, you, all three of us were chatting recently. I told him to t tune in today. Lost his internet. Everyone's losing their internet today, man. Like, it's weird. Like, there's a lot oh, of man. internet issues. Yeah, I'm, I'm good where I'm at. I'm in the yeah. middle of nowhere, exactly. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, everyone who is watching live on social media, let us know. Like, I had posted a question at the bottom. Like, what are your, uh, what about PPC you struggle with? Because that's, that's really where you kind of hang your hat on as a yeah. seller. You really became a master or like a, a master student of the game. And you taught yourself all the different strategies. And specifically, because we actually had a person who, who uh, Brendan, who's uh, comments on our show a lot. He said, the toughest thing to sell on Amazon is always supplements. And I can never figure it out. And I told him, I was like, hey, just 
give us the time. We're going to bring in people who can help us crack it. But you, you didn't really like have the mentality like, Hey, this is really difficult to crack. Dude, I didn't you, even know what's this is your background. I didn't even know what was good to sell on Amazon. What's bad to sell on Amazon. Didn't, didn't know anything. Like I, I had a product made and then I said, how can I sell it on Amazon? So right. very different approach. Um, I don't do any of my product research based on uh, m money, like, and, and search volume and that kind of stuff. What I do do is, is I find solutions to problems and I make them better than everyone else's solutions. And then I validate that that solution is in demand. And so that's why I do things a little bit differently. It's like, okay, so for example, we can touch on neuro. This is, this is a perfect time to touch on neuro. Neuro yeah. is a solution to a problem that's better than everyone's solution. So uh, to give you guys a little bit of a background on neuro, uh, basically I approached Samer Brax, who, is, who hopefully he's going to come on the show soon too. And he is um, a big Amazon FBA YouTuber, shared his journey. I love the guy because he's very authentic. Uh, no, no catch, zero catch with this guy. And so when I saw him on YouTube, I really liked him. We became very close friends. Um, but I told him, I was like, man, you need content for your channel. I want, you know, uh, brand awareness. Uh, so let's do like this collab where I'll take a product from Z that we like from zero all the way to launch and everything and fully transparent, show everyone, everything, how much it costs, what, how we formulated how, where we sourced everyone that we used. I said, let's push it and uh, uh, like, you know, even go like more, higher stakes I've never done Kickstarter in my life. Let's get it on Kickstarter, attempt to, to make it a success there. From there, we're going to launch on Amazon because what's the worst that can happen? I'll just, you know, I'm going to pay my own money anyways. So even if Kickstarter is a failure, at least everyone learns because everyone's going to watch the whole journey. Um, yeah, get it on Amazon, PPC, everything. And then you can document, we'll release profit and loss statements every month and like, you know, just kind of just expose everything. Okay. And, and, um, uh, so the product that we came up with was, we wanted a nootropic coffee alternative. So this is a, a replacement to coffee. We want it to be like a ritual. Uh, everyone wakes up and they love that smell of coffee. For me, I know I would get really addicted. So I only drink coffee on Saturdays. I have a specific place, but now I've been like trying different coffees. I usually go to the Starbucks, uh, in the plaza near my house. Um, you know, it's a beautiful area, but now I've been trying different coffees, but I'll go get a coffee and like, just enjoy it, sip on it, it, you know, in the sun in LA, it's beautiful, but I wanted something that can replace that every day that, but di didn't have all the negative side effects, no jitters, no like anxiety, no sleep that, you know, issues with sleep. So we created this alternative, which you get the energy from Guarana and Kola Nut. It has nootropics, lines, main, reishi, uh, you know, cordyceps. Uh, yep. There, there you go. And, and, you um, producing yeah. as we are talking, it, it has, uh, ashwagandha and maca as adaptogens because, uh, coffee really, uh, you know, hurts your adrenal glands and, and like fatigues them and this stuff replenishes it. And so, and we wanted to make it into like a very nice latte, something very enjoyable that you would love to drink every day. And so, Again, we we found a problem, which was Samer said, like, man, I, I, I like nootropics. I like biohacking. Samer said, I have this problem. You know, I want coffee for energy, but it really kills me. It makes me jittery, anxious. And if I have it after 12 p.m., my sleep schedule is all off. I said, well, that's perfect. Let's create a solution for that. And then, you know, uh, and then like kind of, you know, look at the demand. Who likes this? We asked a lot of people. We looked at, you know, on Amazon uh, search volume for certain keywords that involve nootropics and coffee alternative and all this stuff. The demand was there and we knew that we can create something that's better than everyone else. So that's how I go about creating products. It's never like, hey, let me find these like, like cool little like, you know, tricks and, and, you know, black box, all this kind of stuff. Right. But I also want to add that in this Everyone should follow the series. Why? Well, first of all, Ping Pong, Pay Ping Pong Payments is a sponsor in the series. So we wanted to like really, you know, kind of over deliver on something cool. So we, we reached out to people like we have Ping Pong, Thrasio, uh, Getida, um, you know, Pickfu, Cellarize, Incrementum. All of those, they support us because we wanted the series not just to be like, hey, watch us do this stuff. Like, how can we take it to the, to like the maximum amount of value. Well, if we have people like you in our corner, well, number one, if I say, Hey, uh, you know, ping pong, 
can you help me? Like you guys have Kenny in China. Can you help me with someone who's an expert in import export China? I'm sure you guys will, will know someone or maybe say, Hey man, can you connect us with someone who, you know, obviously you, you're, you're going to teach us about uh, uh, currency exchange and, right. and uh, wiring money and, and all the best practices, everything. So we said, if we brought all of these uh, uh, sponsors in, we have access and, and are able to provide so much more value than it just like here, Hey, follow my journey. You know, this is cool. There's drama. I might fail. Okay. That's good. But what's better is like, Hey, follow my journey. And every step of the way, I'm going to bring experts, not just to teach me, but to teach everyone, uh, you know, about everything. And so it's, it's a super cool, uh, this is one of, one of the, like my most exi- exciting ventures in 2021. And the, the best thing is, I said that I was going to stay focused in 2021. And, and so instead of doing like all these different things, I still, it's, it's a brand, it's a supplement brand. I have my same um, supply chain. I have my same employees doing everything, listing, uh, PPC, all of this stuff is like, you know, under my employees so I can delegate most of the work. Uh, so I'm doubling down on what I already know. And that, that was one of the biggest lessons I learned in 2020 is I saw so many people do so many different things and, and be so profitable and, I don't know if you've heard of shiny object syndrome. I definitely yeah. got shiny I've, object I've had, syndrome. I've had that pretty bad yeah. in my past. And so uh, luckily I met I met some people who kind of, especially like one guy who kind of said, hey man, uh, you know, you really need to double down and, and be laser focused. And so I'm doubling down on my supplement brands and, and uh, this is a per- perfectly aligns with that. And at the same time, it's going to take my skill set to the next level because of all the you know people like you who are teaching us about currency exchange and uh, ping pong payments and and all that kind of stuff and you know people like uh whatever thrasio who have like a host of you know uh, experts in li- whether it's listing optimization etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah, yeah I'm, scroll- I'm scrolling through and showing your website for people that are showing your brand like obviously yeah. uh just just all the cool stuff that's going on having your your website and uh making sure that, you know, people are aware of it, obviously, which is really cool in terms of like what you're doing for go, it's go hydrolyte technically, but the it's hydrolyte, just hydrolyte, right. It's hydrolyte too. So obviously search go hydrolyte. We'll make sure the link gets on there. There he is. I, you owe me a water bottle, man. Dude, I got you. I got you I, after that. Oh. Yeah. You see, you sent me the care package, so I, I'll get your information. I'll send it. Yeah, for sure. So, and, th- and that's kind of what we were talking about too. So, um, for Neuro, we're really excited about collaboration, which is a really cool project. We're working behind the scenes. Uh, Mina and his team, they're actually going to be using ping pong to, to pay suppliers yeah. in China and, and find different today. ways. To like, yeah, I, like today, we're, we're talking about it right before this. We're like, hey, we're good to go. Like your account will set up like really quickly with us. Um, we're getting you guys green lit and using like our virtual cards to obviously pay suppliers over there in China, saving them money. So obviously it's a, it's a natural yeah. collaboration. So. Well, well, there'll be more. You'll see us around working with Mina quite a bit and uh, having him back on the show for sure. Uh, so you guys, you and Samer, I'm I'm super excited about the project. I think you guys are going to lot get a lot of like yeah. interest and intrigue from it. So we're excited to do that with you guys. That being said, supplements. A lot of people are just kind of like don't understand why that's such a competitive nature on Amazon, but it is. It's hard to rank. It's hard to be successful. It's hard to drive sales. Take us through all the different barriers of like why it's so difficult. Like the perception is difficult, but what's actually really difficult about being successful on Amazon with something that's regulated. And that's, and that's why all supplements are regulated, right? Yes, exactly. So with supplements, uh, well, there's a few things. Number one, because the FDA does not regulate it, like it it can only after the fact, like after someone gets sick, they can go after someone, but they they don't really, you don't have to go through a, a vetting process. So there is nothing stopping me right now from getting a fake certificate of analysis, getting a fake invoice, getting a fake label, a fake everything, putting gummy bears in a bottle and selling it as uh, elderberry gummies. You know, there's nothing, literally nothing stopping me. I could do it if I wanted to. And so because this happens, it, it results in a lot of like, you know, you can't really falsify like headphones, you know, headphones are headphones. They're... You, you know, they have to function. And if they don't function, you're going to get screwed. So you can't really falsify that. But with supplements, you can because it's 
you know, there's usually no direct 100% like one-to-one -one effect that you feel from a supplement. It's not like I take maca root and then next day I'm like feeling like 10 times better. Like it doesn't work. Like it's a, a long process and um, you have to be ha like only changing one thing at a time to, to really like feel a significant difference. Maybe you have to be taking your blood work. So with that, it's almost like there's no way to tell does it work or does it not work? Is it fake or is it real? Which allows a lot of people and a lot of scammers to be to be on the platform now because it's a, such a, a lucrative business selling supplements there's a lot of black hat things happening in the back so a lot of people consider incentivized reviews black hat this is that's not not even black hat guys this is like normal okay incentivized reviews in supplement space is like you're you're behaving yourself uh there's a lot of like you know, b buying an old listing with 1500 reviews and then merging it and, and automatically having a, a ton of reviews. There's a lot of like, um, you know, uh, shutting down people's listings by like uploading different things like in Amazon. It's just like, there's a lot of crazy stuff that happens, but that's all besides the point. There's a, a whole other issue, uh, which I had to face, which was you're competing with 150, 200, 500 million dollar companies. Okay. And these people have budgets and are branded so well branded and you don't have these budgets. So the only leg that I had to stand on was my PPC. Now there's two sides in Amazon. There's convertibility and discoverability. Convertibility is basically how good is my listing, my price reviews, bullet points, description, images, enhanced brand content. How likely is it if a hundred people come onto my website, how many of those or come on to, sorry, my listing, how many of those are going to convert into a sale? So that's convertibility. If you have that sorted out and you're between 20, 30, whatever, 40, some, some of my listings go up to like 70, 60, 70. Some are like on the lower, maybe 17, 18. I really like to stay no lower than 20. But once you're, you're okay in your convertibility, now it's like, okay, let's get as many people as possible to those listings. Now, Trying to rank for main keywords is, you know, and obviously a lot of people are like, oh, just do rebates and giveaways and search find buy. Guys, I get it. But it's this is like it's it's a very it's almost like a, a, a tool, like a tool. You know, it's a it's not like the whole picture. So the only thing that you can do is you have to do something that's sustainable on Amazon. And, and you know, what I had to do is I had to really figure out PPC. So discoverability is going to come from PPC and it's sending traffic to Am to my Amazon listing as much as possible. Because if out of a hundred people, thir I get 30 sales. If I get a thousand people, I get 300 sales. If I get 10,000 people, I get 3000 sales. So it's kind of like work that way. Okay. How can I get 10,000 people to my listing every single month to, to get 3000 sales on that skew? Well, main keywords is going to be very difficult because like I said, all of the big brands are targeting main keywords. So my strategy said, this is what I want to do. I want to target every single keyword under the sun. So it starts off by, I have my four auto campaigns, uh, close match, loose match, compliment substitutes. I have my main keyword under three separate campaigns, a broad phrase and exact. So that's three separate campaigns. I have my top 10 keywords. And the way that I get my top 10 keywords is basically I get my top 10 competitor SKUs. No one that's like super branded. So don't do like like for me, I wouldn't do liquid IV because the, people search for liquid IV by liquid IV. They're not like actually searching for a product. They're searching right. for liquid IV. So I get my top 10 competitors, put them on helium 10 Cerebro, do a reverse ASIN lookup, do minimum of, uh, I do advanced filters, minimum of nine ranking competitors. And it gets me the intersection of all, all those 10 products, what keywords they're ranking for. And I sort by highest search volume to lowest search volume, get those top 10. So now I have top 10 broad phrase and exact. So that's four auto, three main, three top 10. And then I start targeting my own products. If, if, um, if I have other SKUs to kind of like upsell my new product, I start targeting, um, uh, what is it called? Oh, I do. Uh, I uh, start targeting broad phrase and exact branded terms. So hydrolyte, MMA nutrition, uh, you know, hydrolyte uh, electrolytes and so on and so forth. And so from there, this is the overall goal is, discover as many keywords as possible and then target them. And, and then, so those campaigns will run a week later. I, I run them aggressively. A uh, few tips. I do one campaign, one ad set, uh, and then the, the keywords. The reason I don't do multiple ad sets is I don't know how the spend is going to go. If I don't know how the spend is going to go, I don't want to just let Amazon control it. So I'll control it myself. 
I'll just keep it linear. And then Smart. I'll do a minimum minimum of a hundred dollar budget to make sure that Amazon realizes that I can spend money. Now I'm obviously not going to spend a hundred dollars on every single campaign because I'll keep my bids relatively low and then work my way back up. So a week later, I'll go check in my search term reports, pull out every single keyword in ASIN that was discovered. Again, keywords, I'll launch them as broad phrase and exact. And then ASINs, I'll uh, target them as product targeting campaigns. And I'll keep doing and doing and doing. The goal is to target every single keyword under the sun. Now, obviously, you're going to be like, yo, this is definitely not profitable. And you're right, it's not. But you can't tell me it is or it's not if you don't have data. And that's what I'm after is the data. So my goal is to target every single keyword possible and then let the data, if the ACOS is too high, I'll lower the bid. If it's getting clicks and no sales, I'll lower the bid. If it's not getting any impressions, I'll increase the bid. And basically, um, uh, my goal is to capture every single keyword out there, get them targeted in all match types. And again, broad phrase and exact are completely separate. Don't And please don't think that if you're targeting a keyword, if you find a keyword that's successful in broad, if you put an exact, it's going to be successful. No, they just behave completely differently. And the problem is we, can, we can't predict the behavior of anything. You know, we can only make changes based on data. And that's why I have a very, very data-driven approach. It's like, if you tell me the ACOS is 70%, I'll lower the bid uh, by like five cents. If you tell me the ACOS is 100%, I'll still lower the bid by five cents. If you tell me the ACOS is 12%, maybe I'll increase the bid by two cents. Um, that's it, it's plain and simple. Uh, if you tell me the, the ACOS is 20%, I'll just leave it alone. Because I just do a data-driven approach. I don't say, okay, well, this keyword was successful in broad, so now let's negative it in broad and put it in phrase so that it's targeting more and then put it in exact. All this mumbo-jumbo, it doesn't make any sense because in every single match type, the keyword performs completely differently. So if I have electrolyte powder in broad, it's triggering for 70 different keywords, okay? Now, whatever, maybe it's triggering for unflavored electrolyte powder, doesn't mean that if I put it in phrase or exact, those keywords in phrase or exact, that, that they're going to perform well. So the reason it, that's the reason I target everything. And then from there, I optimize based on whatever the data is telling me. So if, for example, I think that electrolyte powder for keto is going to do incredible, but it doesn't, I'm not like going to argue with Amazon and the data. I'm going to be like, okay, it's not doing well, lower the bid. And so uh, uh, you know, I'm constantly optimizing, constantly launching new campaigns. I think for Hydrolyte Unflavored, I have a thousand campaigns running um, alone just for that keyword, uh, just for that, sorry, product. That's cute. Are you managing all these yourself, by the way? I have a full-time uh, employee 40 hours a week okay. under me. Gotcha. Who does it? But yeah, but, but I, you know, he does it. And I also uh, hired uh, an Excel guy, built some macros to kind of do these like, uh, because overall it's the same, the same action. If, right. it, if it's uh, over a certain ACOS, do a certain thing. If it's under a certain ACOS, and obviously I can have different ACOS brackets if I want to. Uh, if it's doing a certain action, do this. It's all if and then statements. So all I need to do is I hired someone and I told them for, you know, I for these, uh, this is the list of if statements and then actions, uh, consequences according to those if statements. So if the ACOS is like over 100, do this. If the ACOS is between 180, do that. So I gave him all the list and he just built the, the spreadsheet to just, you know, follow the, the rules that I He did. built out a PPC SOP basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then. You know, from there, I also go into the search term reports and for broad and phrase and auto campaigns, if there's any keywords that are bringing down the whole team, uh, you know, if like, for example, for electrolyte powder, everything is generally doing okay, but then you have like, you know, a certain, you know, electrolyte uh, drink or electrolyte bottle uh, that's like doing horrible, I'll negative that, you know, and, and by doing horrible, I mean in the last uh, 60 days over 100% ACOS or um, you know, $10 in the last 60 days, $10 spend and no sales. I'll negative that. And then maybe in the future, I'll, re I'll remove it from negative and test it out again. But that's pretty much my strategy in a nutshell. It's nothing like crazy complicated, but it's just continuously discovering keywords, launching, optimizing, and then discovering more launching, optimizing, and so on and so forth in a nice, uh, flow. Um, and, and, you know, you, ha you also have to understand buyer psychology because, a lot of people will be like, top of search, top of search. I'm like, maybe on top of search for sugar-free electrolyte powder for keto, you're going to do amazing because whoever's looking mm -hmm. for that is very specific and has higher buyer intent. But someone who types in electrolyte powder 
top of search they don't care they're just like so what is the electrolyte powder they're just yeah browsing but maybe if, you, if i'm on page three for electrolyte powder i'm killing it because by the time someone gets to page three and clicks on my listing they're pretty interested in 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 my product because they clicked on my listing and they skipped the first you know two pages so there's a lot that goes into it and that's why i just fully follow a data-driven approach everything is granular i don't go more than 10 keywords per campaign because uh because I realized Amazon is just going to pick the, the top, uh, you know, traffic and performing ones and just funnel the money there. And so I used to have like a hundred keywords in a campaign and then it will be like zero or one impression for everything. Right. And then like 10,000 impressions for like the, you know, the first five or seven. And I'm like, okay, well clearly there's something happening here. Yeah. The Amazon's algorithm will just serve like, or just kind of, pick those top ones. Like you said, I think you were the one who posted to or had shared something in terms of like, if, even if it's a negative campaign or it's not successful, doesn't mean that Amazon won't look at that campaign later on and start serving and be giving more impressions, uh, later on. I, I think that was you that shared some content. You share so much, like I learned so much, just like kind of like picking what you're, uh, picking up what you're learning. So that's super fascinating. So obviously PPC is number one, in terms of like your marketability yeah. is that and, how and you, so, look, you and, and, that? and the reason that i i did so like i went so hard on ppc is because like i said you're not going to be found uh, uh easily when especially when you're starting maybe now you know i have 1600 reviews on the og uh it's okay i can like kind of hold my own but like when i first started you can't really compete in in those main keywords so the goal was to hit up all of the other keywords that you know, maybe you stand a chance because remember, every time you launch a new keyword and a new campaign, Amazon gives you a chance and it says, right. okay, like, let's see what, how people are going to react to this. See if they'll and buy it, and obviously, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And if you do well, okay, you'll stay. If you don't, then you, you're, you know, slowly going to start dropping down the ranks. And so that's why I had to, I knew the optimum nutrition is not spending time for their 1000 SKUs you know, adding like all of these keywords and looking for every single small possible keyword that they can find. But I had the time and, and I'm like, you know, I got to figure out a way to make it happen. So that's kind of what I did. Awesome. Where are you going to iterate from in like this next year? Like, where are you going to continue to invest like more of the targeted approach like DSP or are you going to kind of move your, your product down any of those kinds of paths even further? Like, uh, you know, obviously like, retargeting and like even build off of Amazon or do you think just sticking with Amazon for your brand? So, so yeah. So for, for my goals, right. Uh, for 20, uh, 2021 goals is for PPC, I really want to get way deeper into uh, top, uh, you know, um, uh, product detail, uh, not detail page display ads, uh, sponsored display and sponsor brands, uh, video and search ads. I really want to, you know, double down hard on that in terms of, I, I I'm very close to, um, finishing an omni channel let me actually if you want i'll share it real quick yeah for sure uh let me share this because I, I was actually just working on it okay share the screen let's do this one so i was working here like on a i don't know can you see my screen uh let me add it to the stream and then for those who are listening on the podcast yeah. we can obviously uh talk through it for sure yeah so you know i really working on an omni uh channel like approach and obviously this is very very rough but like i have instagram facebook uh, you know website youtube google uh, anything else and you know where all of my like uh, kind of top of the funnel is uh, everything feeds into the website and i really want to kind of have my retargeting down and so i have middle of the funnel bottom of the funnel until the completion you know hitting them up with testimonials uh carousel ads unboxing videos showing up on youtube showing up on google you know showing up on instagram and then once I can do that, once anyone who visits my homepage and, and, uh, or product page is really very well targeted in all of the different uh, platforms, like all of the different channels, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Google, uh, whatever, you know, wh wherever I can, I can retarget with a pixel, then I'll start kind of w one by one uh, on every single channel, like in increasing the size of the top of the funnel. And so saying, okay, let's do more uh, carousel ads, let's do more video ads, let's do more brand awareness ads, let's do more articles, let's do more, um, you know, story ads, uh, let's do more uh, giveaways, you know, sponsored giveaways with influencers, let's do more YouTube ads, and then just kind of slowly, like, 
since I have my middle and bottom of the funnel kind of like there and, and supporting me, just keep widening. And, and, and if I can say, okay, I have 10,000 people visiting my website right now from my cold, from my cold traffic. And then as they go through the retargeting, I notice that from the people who visit my website all the way to the people who convert, it's like 1%. And then from there, I can say, okay, like let's work backwards. And how do I, and, and if I have 10,000 people converting at 1% uh, and my target sales is like, let's say a thousand units a month, how, like let's reverse engineer that. That means my top of the funnel needs to be driving 30,000, uh, you know, maybe uh, people a month to the website and then going down. And then maybe I say, okay, well it, right now, if I'm doing that, it, it's 10,000 is costing me, you know, X amount of dollars a month. And with this 1% conversion, I'm not profitable. And I really can't tell what my lifetime value of my customer is because I don't have enough data. It's all, I've only been doing this, you know, maybe uh, six months. So, you know, I can't really, you know, go all in like that. So I can say, okay, let's try and improve that. Uh, you know, where are people dropping off the most and then try and improve the middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel and so on and so forth. And so that's kind of where I'm going in terms of, anything that's off Amazon is, is that, but you know, other than, you know, the PPC I, I on Amazon is, is still going to be my number one, but I really believe like if I slowly, like on the side, I'm building this, you know, omni channel, uh, retargeting off of Amazon, eventually, you know, it'll get there because you just got, have to work at something if you want to get, uh, to get it there. But I'm really going to be aggressive this year with supplement launches. I think last year I, I did uh, one, two, three, I did like three uh, products. I think this year I can definitely hit like eight or nine. Uh, I want to take uh, Hydrolyte at least from four to to ten SKUs. Um, my other brands, I think I want to add two SKUs to one or two or th yeah, two or three SKUs to one, and then uh, Neuro. I I at least want to have two SKUs by the end of the year. Hopefully everything is gonna go smooth, and then I have another brand that I'll probably get two more SKUs. So. Um, you know, I just, I really want to focus on having that one core team and system down. And now I'm right. just repeating and reinvesting into the businesses. Um, and you know, like you can, you can see my systems, how my systems are. So Dude, you're, you're the most organized and very meticulous person I probably yeah. know on the, in the space right now. And I would love to like go into more detail, but I know you got to go. I know it's kind of top of the hour for this. Well, I'll definitely have you on soon enough, obviously either in February or March to kind of talk through another topic, but where, where can people like kind of reach out to you? What's the best way to like get in touch with you about your business or like want to ask questions about PPC or you know, they watch this at a different time. And they're like, holy shit, like that was great information. Where can yeah. I learn more? So uh, Facebook is the number one place to get a hold of me. It's Mina Elias. And then uh, that's M-I-N-A, last name E-L-I-A-S. Uh, Instagram at Egyptian underscore prescription underscore Elias. You know, I share a lot of my life there. Not a lot of it, but like, you know, mostly life stuff, not business stuff. Uh, a little bit of business motivation. Then you can, uh, if you want, PPC help the PPC university.com. I have a full one hour. I have a one hour free course, uh, one hour free video on my uh, YouTube channel. And then I have a one hour free course on my, on that website, the PPC university.com. So it's so like literally two hours of, of free PPC content. And then if you need more, you know, you can go for more. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is the best place to find me follow Samer Brax or subscribe to Samer Brax YouTube channel. Uh, uh, and you know, uh, that's where we're going to do all the neuro stuff and, um, definitely go to the Brax FBA group on Facebook. Cause that's where Mr. Ryan is going to show up and we're gonna <laughs> talk all things ping pong and stuff like that. I'll be there. Yep. And Sam, Samer's group is fantastic, especially on YouTube, mm -hmm. like just the different content he's dropping things like 10,000 subscribers plus like it's, it's just in, good the, stuff. in the group, in the group, it's crazy. Yeah, in, it's the, so in the group, it's crazy. crazy. You're contributing. People are contributing across the Amazon space. Uh, I, I'm constantly learning. I think it's probably one of the more active groups. I would say like that are not service, uh, like, like an Amazon service yeah. provider yeah. oriented. So I would suggest like, if you're a new Amazon I seller, go ahead. Me and Samer are really like, uh, okay. So part of the neuro series is where we have a full playbook and in that playbook, it's literally step-by-step step, every single thing that we did for the neuro business, uh, is going to be on there. Like there's going to be what we did and a video of me like doing it, explaining it, me or, me or Samer, and with the links and whatever, and, and if there's like discounts. So we're literally compiling everything. It's 100% free. 
I think the the whole thing is we just really I hate seeing people getting taken advantage of. I'm not gonna be here forever. My brands are growing aggressively, and eventually, at some point, I'm gonna have to hand the torch. So it's not like I'm trying to make a buck off anyone. Um, I really just want to add value. I wish that people added value to me the same way I'm adding when I first started. So that's it's just kind of a way to give back. Uh, you know, I don't give back a lot, so I try my best, and and this is kind of like one of the ways is. To give knowledge, it's not hard. It's free. Uh, I know a lot of people want to charge for it. A lot of people. The only thing I'll charge for is my time. So you know, if you don't want my time, if you want the you know just knowledge, it's out there. But if you want my time, you have to pay for it. Um, that's generally how it works. But yeah, I mean, just like yeah. any person out there with any business too, like time's yeah. the only commodity we don't get back. But you're a busy person. We understand that. Hey, thanks so much for jumping on today. Like I'm, I'm super excited to obviously work off offline with you guys and you and Samer and the team over there. Be safe traveling out there. Hopefully, yep. hopefully everything's kind of like settled down. You can catch up with everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from no, crazy snow down. in snow in Texas, right? Who would have thought? It was a sign, man. It was a sign, like, yo, chill out with the flights. Yeah, I mean, maybe like at the beginning of this year, we're just like, all right, let's plan out maybe the first half of the year and like let's see where we go from there. So hopefully, yeah. we're all meeting again in person here later this year. So. Hey, I mean, obviously I call you a friend, uh, but friend of the show now. So thanks so much for hopping on, sharing content with us about breaking through a very tough topic. But uh, for, for more on Crossover Commerce, guys, we're going to be going live tomorrow and as well as Friday. Go ahead and join us live on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow, up, follow me now on Instagram and Facebook. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we're always posting content as much as we can. Again, on LinkedIn as well. Uh, we're always posting as much information as we can by being successful in e-commerce and Amazon to help other sellers grow. So for Mina, I'm Ryan. Uh, thanks for joining us again live. Go ahead and if you have questions, go ahead and submit those and tag one of us. We'll make sure that those get answered later on. So thanks so much, man. I appreciate it.